Hello legends, if you are new to coding and you just started using Cursor AI, then I have a way to 5x the value that you get from Cursor. So in the top right hand corner of Cursor, there is a settings button, which if you click, you open up the rules for AI. You open up a settings panel that has a section that you can input rules for the AI. So you can input custom instructions into here so that when you're having a chat with the assistant, for example, when you're creating some code, the assistant will be following the custom instructions that you created. So here's a custom set of instructions that I created to basically say that, hey, you are a JavaScript programmer, you're very experienced in automation because most likely if you're watching my videos and you're interested in coding, you're probably looking at automation, maybe making apps, stuff like that. So you're experienced with task automation, API calls and data processing, and your role is not only to assist users with creating code for them, but to also help them learn the fundamentals of JavaScript. So right off the bat, we're actually tailoring the experience that you're having in Cursor to not only help you write the code, but also teach you about the code that it's writing for you. So this is a two-in-one because the purpose of using something like Cursor AI is to make those first few steps of getting into coding super easy. But what you also wanna do is you wanna do some study. You actually wanna get better at coding. You don't need to know how to code, but you wanna understand more of the concepts and how code works so that when you're planning out future builds, what's possible, or when you're running into issues, you know where the issue is gonna be. Next, we have the context. Now I find separating the role from the context is good because the role kind of gives the high level objective and the context defines the environment the agent is operating within. And finally, we have a comprehensive list of instructions. So the purpose of these instructions is one, to write the code for you, but two, to also be a study assistant. So traditionally speaking, whenever you go to school or uni or you're trying to learn something for yourself, you're most likely learning things that aren't super relevant to you. But when you're writing custom code, when you're actually writing a code and you're asking AI to write that script for you, well, that script is super relevant. So whatever comes up in there, like whatever frameworks, whatever functions, whatever's going on in that code is super relevant to you. So we're telling the assistant to basically teach you about what it's writing for you. To go through these one by one, we always want the assistant to return full code. We don't want the assistant to be returning any snippets. Right now, when we're first starting to code, we wanna have the full code written out each time. So every time we make an edit, it's always the full code given back to us. We then want a breakdown of what was done, like what's going on in the code? What did you change? Why did you build it like this? Next, we have installation commands. So sometimes when you write code, you need to install additional packages so that you can actually run that code. For example, if you wanna work with an Excel document or a Word document, then you'll need to install an Excel or a Word package. So over here, we're basically saying, hey, make it super clear what packages we need to install to run the code. Next, we have debugging guidance. So this is like super important. And one thing I learned for myself that I always wanna have console logs in my code so I can quickly and easily identify where an issue might be. For example, if you run a code and it has three functions in it, and your console log says completing function one, completing function two, completing function three, but in your terminal, you only see completing function one and then it stops. Then when you copy the error from the terminal and you give it to your AI, it's gonna see, oh, we only completed function one and then we didn't even start function two. The error must be there. Next, we have key concepts. So this is probably a pretty fundamental thing. You wanna understand the key concepts or best practices of whatever it is that you're doing. So again, super relevant for you because you're writing and working with this current code. So knowing some concepts or functions or best practices of what's going on is gonna be super easy for you to retain. Next, we have data type explanations. So pretty much all the code that you're gonna be writing is either gonna be making an API call to interact with another tool or processing data. So this step is super important because you're gonna start learning about different data types and how to work with them. And trust me, that is not easy, especially as a brand new coder. Then we have a section for learning resources. So if there's anything that's brought up in one of these sections that the AI deems worthy enough to do some further research on, it'll link you to additional resources or let you know what to Google to find more information. And then finally, a placeholder to just use beginner friendly language. Nothing too complicated, just keep it really simple and make it super easy for you to interact with the code. All right, so let's copy this prompt, go across to cursor and, pa and paste it in the rules section. All right, there we go, I've pasted in the prompt. Now let's close this tab and write some code to see how the instructions impact our system. I'm gonna create a new file. Let's call this new.js. And now let's have a chat with the assistant. Can you write me a Zendesk API call to add a new ticket for the customer? Let's hit enter. Let me just expand this a little bit. Awesome, so we have a clear explanation of what we're gonna be doing we're told to install the Axios package. We'll be using the Axios library to make the API call. So you can just copy this, paste it into your terminal, and then hit enter. And now you're installing that Axios package. 
And then you have the actual code. And if we keep scrolling down, then we have the explanation of this code. Interesting thing here, we're using a try catch for error handling. So this is super common in JavaScript. So that's something you're gonna be seeing a lot. Then you'll be seeing a lot of this async and wait, promise chaining, uh, actually all this stuff you're gonna be seeing a lot of. So it's really cool that it's breaking out these key components so you can start learning about them. Next, we have some more variables that we have within the code that we need to change to our actual information. Then we have the actual command to run the code. So like once you've written your code, how do you actually run it? And over here we have node space new.js, which we will input into the terminal and run the code. And finally, we have the actual URL for Zendesk API documentation, the Axios documentation, and then some more information about JavaScript promises and async wait functionality. Again, all with URLs. So if I was you guys, I would actually go into probably not the promise and async wait functionality or the Axios documentation. I'd probably go into Zendesk and just read a little bit about their API calls to start getting familiar. If this is an API call that I'm gonna be making all the time. All right guys, and I still have one more thing to show you. So I'm gonna link this in the video description, but if you go to cursor.directory, you'll be able to access a bank of prompts that people have created for all different languages. So you've got TypeScript, Python, React, Vite, you also have uh, prompts for different functionality like making API calls or working with GraphQL. If you keep scrolling down, you also have prompts for a, an assistant that's gonna be a web developer. And you keep scrolling down, you can see there's a bunch of different categories for prompts. So you can just scroll through here and find a prompt that you like, or you can take a couple of prompts, plug them into ChatGPT and say, hey, use this style and then convert it to do X, Y, and Z for me. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're liking this level of beginner tutorial for something like Cursor AI, or even to get into coding in the first place, uh, please drop a comment below and let me know that you wanna see more of this kind of content. All right, see ya.